Anyone want to add anything to that? No, 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 no. Yes, uh, <laughs> just one thing, if that's all right. Yes, fire away. No, 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 but I, I, I thought maybe we should mention the marrow. <laughs> well, excellent, yes. We'll include that. Anything else? No, 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 no. That's no, is it? No, 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 yes. Right. Moving on. Jim? No, 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 yes. There we are. Don't drink it all at once. Top stuff. And and you are. No, 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 no. Now, my friends, I am joined on my show today by a very, very special guest with over five decades in performing arts, best known for his hilarious role in the BBC comedy The Vicar of Dibley, known as Jim Trot, and also known for his uh, comic line, No, 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 yes, I can't do it like him, but he can. I'm joined on the show today by Trevor Peacock himself. Hello, Trevor. No, 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 no. Yes. <laughs> yes. Well, that's uh, a very good start to the I'll show. Just sit down. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, how are you, Trevor? I'm fine. I'm fine. Lovely to be here. It's lovely, yes. lovely to have you with us here yes. on uh, and Radio you've got Camel. a young son now. Right? I have indeed. Yeah, yes. he's ten weeks old yesterday. Yes. So, bless him. What's the first name? Brandon. Brandon. Brandon William. Michael McGinty. Michael McGinty. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, it's lovely, lovely to have you with us, Trevor. I'm yeah. going to start with um, the first question of all. I've been at it with research for the past two days, so I hope these questions are accurate enough. But um, what was it like growing up in 1930s London? 1930s London. Well, oh. well, well, the war started in 1936, mm -hmm. and... Uh, and uh, uh, nothing was happening then, but about three years later, of course, the Blitz was was uh, st struck, and yeah. uh, I slept under under the earth, you know, in a in a, in a uh, underground tunnel. That's right. Yeah. Yes. And uh, but you you weren't shocked by it all, and even when the bomb stopped falling, you thought at my age, you know, well, young, you were only a child. Yeah. You thought, oh well, this is sort of what what happens in the world, you know. So it wasn't a great shock. It was rather exciting. Yeah. Uh, uh, to say that the Blitz was exciting is a terrible thing in one sense, but it was uh, it was to us, you see. Yeah. And uh, uh, and we followed, and the radio was terribly important in those days because you had to follow what was happening because at any moment the Gestapo would come in through the door, <laughs> and that would be nice. But I saw the Battle of Britain, you know, and yeah. the Spitfires used to come over doing the victory roll. You spent a lot of your time. Um, you, um, you, you spent a lot of your youth attending Sunday school and Bible class. Did yeah. this help you? Uh, did this help guide you into performing arts in any way, Trevor? Yes, it did. Because my old man was the was the organist. Yeah. And I was pumping, mm -hmm. pumping. You see, <laughs> they didn't have electricity in those days, <laughs> and uh, somebody had to pump air. Otherwise, you know, it would be. Uh, and did those feet in ancient time? It would just go because there was no air. And uh, and uh, uh, there's a little there was a little rock on on a string. Mm -hmm. And as long as that that was down here, yeah. low, uh, there was air for the the organ. And and if you if it, if you stopped, because I used to sort of peep out and watch the old girls and the faces they pulled while they sang hymns. And and so suddenly my dad would shout, blow, 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 go, whoa. <laughs> and so quickly I would pump. And uh, it, was, it was great fun. But I I was, I was he was a, a minister um, and often did the preaching as well as playing the organ. Yeah. And so I was singing hymns uh, three or four times a week. Wow. And I, without knowing it, I suppose one... One got to know about tunes, yeah. Middle eights, yeah. Uh, when when to sing loud, when to sing low, the whole idea of creating a tune. I never thought I'd use it, but because he was a good organist and pianist, so was my brother. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I couldn't play the mouth organ even. I don't think I could whistle. At <laughs> oh, bless you! <laughs> <laughs> but but I had music. Music had been going into yeah. my head. 
from an early age. So it was influencing, influencing you from a very young age then? You, you don't know, but it is. I mean, it's like exactly. saying that you, Murray, the great tennis player, yeah. he probably was playing tennis when he was about three. Yeah. And that's why he's good now. He's 23 or whatever. Exactly, so. exactly. It, it kind of um, fuels you in the yeah. future, really, doesn't yeah, it? To, yeah. uh, not, maybe not so much on purpose, but kind of like just naturally, yeah. um, you kind of pick things up and that's how you root, really, I think, isn't yeah. it? Yes. But um, what was your favourite childhood memory? Crumbs. Oh, I don't know. Uh, what was my first... The, I think the first... One of the big changes for me was uh, we moved from Tottenham. Yeah. Tottenham Hotspur, you see, was my first club. Didn't, yes. you, um, didn't you audition or you done a trial for Tottenham Hotspur when you were 18 years old? Is oh, that later correct? Later on, that's what, quite a leap on, yes. Yeah. I went to the grammar school, you see, when, when after a while, when yeah. I was 11. And, uh, and that, was, they, that was a very ancient uh, grammar school. It had its own fields, huge fields. Wow. Uh, and, um, and football was soccer. They didn't play rugby, they played soccer. And um, and I did get a, a trial, because in those days anybody playing for Tottenham Hotspur uh, would have come from Tottenham. They all came from Tottenham. Yeah, now they all come from Italy or <laughs> Spain. But uh, in those days it was just local. Football Even was a very clubs. different game back yes, then. Yes, it wasn't was. It? And uh, they had no they had no uh, big uh, academies to train kids. Yeah. So if you played, if you played for the, the the school first team when you got older, when you were about seventeen, 18, yeah, uh, you got a trial and um, and uh, and uh, Buckingham, one of the left back for Tottenham, came and yeah. he saw me, and uh, I thought oh, I just did that pretty good, and he came up and he said, I think you better stay on cricket, <laughs> 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 but he was very kind about it. But I was never good enough to be a pro. You had to be very good. Otherwise, you wouldn't get your ten quid a week, and that was what professional f footballers played. For. Wow, ten pound a week! Ten pounds a week. It shows how much the games kind of progressed from it's there. Really, changed a bit, doesn't yes, it? Yes, yes, <laughs> a lot by a, by a long shot, by a long shot. Anyway, were your parents um, very supportive? Were they always supportive towards your uh, you pursuing your career in acting, in songwriting, in just an all-round performer? Really? Well, well, I suppose they were. When I was a ch child, they were. Mystified, I yeah. think, because I did put on I did put on shows when in the Blitz time, and uh, uh, and it, it was it was great it was done for great fun, and they thought, oh, you know, he's enjoying himself. Yeah. But I, I took it very seriously. I I didn't I don't know why. I think though, you see, a church is rather like a theatre. It you know, is. There's music and there's yeah. there's a platform and everything. An audience. Uh, yes, and a big audience. Yes. In a lot of churches, are, well, they're musical based, really, aren't they? Churches, yes, of course. Of so, course, of course. Uh, but I, I did, I did, I was fascinated by it. Yeah. The the cinema. Mm -hmm. I, um, I they they didn't like me going to the cinema. In fact, I was banned from doing that because the cinema oh. was wicked. Oh. Oh, yes, yes, wicked. Right. Okay. <laughs> okay. Do you? Um... I mean, even sort of, you know, fairy stories on the. The cinema, the cinema, by by people, left wing Baptist people, you know, they thought it was going to be terrible. So it's it almost weird. classed as a sin then. To yes, go. nearly, very Incredible. nearly. But I found the way yeah. of getting in. Somebody said one last one. <laughs> one bloke said to me when I was about twelve, I suppose, said uh, you can't go and you haven't got any money to get in. But he said you go to the side of the of the building and you kick. The click with your left leg down there, then push with the right leg, and it's opened. And exactly. it's, the, it's the door, you know, they have to have these doors yeah. in case something goes wrong. And, uh, and I saw the screen for the first time, an enormous screen, and the Clark Gable was the great hero then in those days, mm -hmm. cowboys and all that sort of thing. Yeah. And there was his head as, as big as the wall, you know. Yeah. <laughs> so, this is for me, this is exciting. And... Uh, and so I used to hang a sheet up, uh, and um, and then uh, you, you, it, would, it would part. And I, I would say to the kids, or I'd put it in, I said, you come in from that side, and you come in from that side. Yeah. So it looked just like the films, you see. Yeah. yeah. And you just talk. <laughs> and they said, what do we talk about? I don't know anything. It doesn't matter what you talk about. Because it, it seemed, and that was the magic. Uh, 
But I didn't know then. I didn't think about the idea that I'd absolutely do it and be paid 